had to update my freaking titles. I already done forgot early. Of course, I just forgot I typed that in. There. I took all that out. I just put the date. And the I'll turn the window, the, the camera off. I was just going to start up. Till we get started here. Let me make sure my satellites are working. I didn't even check them earlier. When they go online too. So I'll just keep my face here till we get the game started. I probably won't stay on much longer. I'll stay on a little bit because I want to do a little bit of GTA. And the Twitch has connected. I'm still using this microphone. Hold on, let me. I'm gonna add a little more of the noise reduction to it. Let's pull it down some more. See how much of that noise we can get out of it. And they should be live now, the satellites, too. There was a Nine Inch Nails song called Satellite. Say your name. They can't hear you with their satellites. You know, his stance has actually shocked me some because if I would have judged the way he was writing those lyrics, he would have been against the New World Order and stuff, but it seems sometimes he sides with them. And that's still there. And we should be live now, the satellite so. Muted. You know, I'm kind of, I was thinking about that, you know, I was just talking, and I'm going to get off of this. It's just a conversation. I'll have this on podcasts or something. But I'm just going to say this one little point. Have you noticed that they're really, really coming down on Marilyn Manson? Well, they tried to get him into the Trump thing. And he told them. He told them he didn't want nothing to do with that politics stuff. And I'm thinking they're coming down on him. Because unlike all the others, if you look at every other of the big rockers, every one of them have went political. And their political is on the side of the New World Order. Neil Young, Guns N' Roses, all of them. If you look at all of them's political stance, they are all siding with those people. And I don't think Marilyn Manson wanted a part of it. And I, th I think that's the reason they're attacking him. But you know, Kenya didn't want a part of it either. He said, when... Um, What's his name? Jay-Z and all them were coming against him. He said, well, what's wrong with making America great again? We'll get off that, but I just thought about that with the satellite song. Because if you listen to that, it sort of sounds like some of the stuff that what Alex Jones or somebody would talk about. But when you read his politics, it doesn't fit the songs that he was singing about. I always like these sessions by myself because nine times out of ten I'm usually getting killed by the other members. And I know they're probably just doing it for fun. they probably doing like how I do with the NPCs. I don't take it personal. Indeed, sometimes I've actually laughed at some of the things they've done. But when I'm wanting to play, I just want to play. Now, somebody kept launching missiles on me and everything else. I actually laughed my ass off at some of that stuff.
I like launching the missile. It's just I can't get I can't get get refueled on it for some reason or another. I've tried. I don't know how to to get them the <laughs> the bullets for it. I like blowing up the NPCs. Okay. So we're gonna play just a little more. And then I'll get off here. I'll probably go off somewhere around 340. They'll give me 4. Well, I'm going to tell you back in the old days, 4 o'clock was my bedtime. Back before we moved up here, 4 and 5 o'clock was my bedtime. But now I didn't always make it at 4 or 5. Because sometimes I'd get to playing video games and I'd be up to 6 and 7. Those are the old days. I don't feel like that anymore. I can't set up all night and play video games anymore. I, some nights I'd set up with Resident Evil for hours. There's this one day I played it all day, I swear. Like, I would stop and I'd... It was three. You know that music that play? Doo, 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 doo. You could walk through the house and I'd have it paused. And you'd hear that music just playing in the background. Sometimes I'd even leave it on while I went to sleep. Like I'd just pause the game and leave it on while I was asleep. And then I'd get up and start playing it again. There's this one time I, I was trying to play it. I did go all the way through it. I, I got all the way through one, two, and three. Now, I don't, and I think I may have finished, yeah, I finished, uh, Code Veronica, but I never did finish any of the others. Four and below, I never finished them. But I'm telling you, I was obsessed with three. I'd leave it on in the background. You know that little music when she get in that room and play that, that piano music? I know this microphone is terrible. Even the other one, it's got the same sound, but it don't have that static in it. It's got the exact same sound as the other microphone. But it don't have the static. I, I just put that clothes on her this morning, so we're going to leave it on. I think she looks badass anyway. I like how she's looking right now. I'm going to be honest, out of all the characters that I've ever made, and she just sort of evolved, she's become my favorite. I am obsessed with her. Jeff's an old character. He's, but like I've told him, I'm not going to get on that again. He, he dates back to the toy box. He kind of evolved too, though. And the rest of those have just been added through the years. Like wives that he had or girlfriends or his family. Trent. They kind of just came under the story. But him and her are sort of alike. They kind of evolved. I need to go in the car garage. I need to see if she lost her orange car this morning. I bet she lost it. I got a bad habit of losing my cars. It's there. It's actually there. I'll probably lose it. I can't think of the lyrics right now. Boy, I love that song. Though. They're watching you with the satellites. I still like Trent. He was still a big part of my inspirations. And like a hoe, black as a soul, I'd rather die. Thank you. It's just a lot of their political stances. But you know, like I said, I, I, I allow people freedom of speech. Even if I don't agree with them, 
And that's what's wrong with America today. We've gotten where we don't respect other people's right to have their own thoughts. But the problem in Hollywood, they're not thinking. They're like one big program machine. I mean, you listen to them. You listen to them. It's like, it's like one cog. One cog, many bodies. But it's all the same rhetoric. I mean, even the Trump supporters aren't like that. They're all over the map. They can bash the Trump supporters all they want to, but at least some people are all over the map. These people are all on one go. And you listen to the things they say, it's all the same. And me, I'm everywhere. I'm, sc I, I'm, on, I'm with them on some things. Why do you think I liked Marilyn Manson all the years? He was stepping up against people, trampling people's rights. He had this song called, You cannot sedate all the things you hate. I don't need your hate. I decide my fate. That's about burning books and stuff. Burn the witches, burn the witches. Don't take time. That's probably why he ain't going along with it. You see, he may not agree with those people. But I think he respects their right to have that view. And that's why I always respected him, even though he, he went on about Christianity. But I don't think he was really hating Christianity. I think he was just hating the people that were running the Christianity. I'm losing the car now, and I think these schmucks are deliberately doing it. You fucking asshole. You know, Rodney Howard Brown, he don't like the religious people either. But he, he just found a respectable way of dealing with them. He, he does it in different ways. But Marilyn Manson was kind of the same. He just went to great lengths to offend them. I mean, really great. Satanic great lengths to offend them. He tried to offend them with Satan. Scare them with Satan. I really do just think he just does because he does have that one song. I never really hated one true guide, but the guide of the people I hate, their guide ain't real. Those those religious people, that guide they believe in, he ain't real. He's not the real guide. That's not even God's personality. I mean, if you read God's personality, he's the same old in the New Testament. He presented the law. He showed them they couldn't keep it. And then he came and paid the price of that law. And then he made the new covenant. And that was really his plan all along. The Israelites kind of just fell into his plan by rejecting him. He wanted to save the Gentiles too. He came up with a plan that would not only take care of his people. He found a way to pass that blessing on to the Gentile. Through him. Through his death and burial and resurrection. That guy they present, that one that's going to destroy America, that's not the real guy. He will destroy things, but he has a set time for that, the judgment. At the judgment is when he'll take care of all that. When the Antichrist and his B system is finally a place that they're building right now. We're watching them build it. We are literally seeing them build it. I don't think he wanted a part of that though because they tried to do it with a video and he just thought it was funny you know because you know Kathy Griffin she had the head in this sick twisted humor that he has and he that's the way he is he does have that kind of humor his brain when he saw that head he thought well where's the body you can go read it he said it in an interview you can go listen to it i've lost the own car in car now
his sick twisted humor, he thought, well, where's the body? And he imagined, when he made the video, he imagined it throwed off somewhere in some, some street corner. But they were trying to drag him into that political debate, and he didn't want a part of it. He don't get political with his music. And I'm telling you, the minute I heard that interview, because I know Marilyn Manson, I paid attention to him enough to know that that is how his humor works. I mean, if you've ever paid you see, a lot of people didn't take it as humor when he was making these sick jokes. They took it literally. Well, he was literally just been, a, a, he come up with sick, twisted jokes because he had dark humor. But when you understand humor and sarcasm, and you don't get offended by it. But people tend to get offended by what they don't understand. They do it all the time. You can be joking and saying something joke and they'll take it serious. They'll take it literally. I never did take anything you ever said literally. Except for what he believed in about freedom. Like the stuff like you cannot sedate all the things you hate. And that this left, they're even doing it even more than, than the right ever did. At least they just tried to ban stuff that offended them with guide. A lot of the times, or they were banning drugs or something. These people, one day they can, like say, they can all say it one year. But then next year, they may decide that that is offensive. So that next year, nobody can say it. And if you do it, well then they'll, they'll remove you on Twitter or something for it. Or Facebook. You see, that, that they don't even have a set to their rules. I mean, it's whatever, anything goes. Just like their lifestyles. It's anything goes. Like they could tomorrow they could decide a color's offensive. And then that color's banned. And I'm just driving around a circle. They don't even have a set tone to their I mean even them right wingers, at least they always just went after the same stuff. They went after the vulgarity. They went after the drinking. They went after the drugs. They went after the, in his case, he had this thing about taking sex toys out of a stage. That's what stirred them up a lot of times about him. And then they didn't like his satan what they called satanic lyrics. Some of them were satanic, but not all of them were. Like his um, Alien album, if you listen to it, it predicts the future. He was predicting the future just like Alex Jones predicted the future. On his Alien CD. And those other CDs posted. Like the one that come out the next year, 2001. I think it came out two th late 2000, wasn't it late 2000, the late 2000, I can't remember, but it's, it, it, he had that, uh, uh, disposable teens were disposable teens, H Hollywood. Of course, now I'm going to tell y'all something, and I didn't take it literal. Because it was one, an interview, and two, a drug bin. But he told this one time in an interview, and I wish I could find it again, that during the recording of Antichrist Superstar, he took something, and he seen the future. And he came back and he wrote it in a song. Now, I don't know whether he really seen the future or not, 
But I'm going to tell you, if you examine his lyrics, he predicted how people was going to be 20 years ago. You listen to some lyrics. I want to get out of here. Don't want to float in fear. Dead astronaut in space. Talking about everything being gray. And there's other lyrics on there. I want to disappear. I want to dis. Songs like that. I'm a new, I'm a new pneumatic. Well, however it goes. I can suck it and smile. There's a lot of new, new, a new model. A new, a new, a new model. A new. I don't like the drugs, but the drugs like me. I've done that one one night at the karaoke. And I don't think I ever actually paid attention to what it was really saying. But when I was reading the lyrics and singing it, I actually yelled it out. I said, boy, was he right. I actually yelled it out while I was doing the karaoke. Because I never actually paid attention. I didn't really like that song too much. I mean, I liked it, but I didn't really like it like I liked some songs. And I didn't play it all the time like I played some of the time. But I was listening to those lyrics. I tore our orange car all to pieces. I don't like the drugs, but the drugs like me. It's time about how lost we were. And about how we're just waiting for the next guide to come along. Even though the song is about drugs, when you listen to the lyrics, it's about people being so lost that they're, they're looking for their next guide. I don't like the drugs, the drugs, the drugs. No life, baby. Yeah, I'm telling y'all, he said in an interview he went to the future and saw the future. And I didn't, back then, I didn't think nothing about it because the future hadn't come yet. But the more I listen to those lyrics, the more I think that maybe he might have had some kind of... Spe I mean, drugs do open up things. They open up portals. That's why a lot of times they did the drugs, the DMT. The DMT. You know, Joe Rogan talked about the DMT. I don't like the drugs, the drugs, the drugs. He did predict the future in his lyrics. And when that actually hit me, when I was listening to him in past tense, I thought, I mean, I can just sit there and listen. And I'll hear stuff that I see now. But back then I didn't see it. He's just more, indeed, he's, just, he's more prophetic than most prophetic professors you know Rodney and them they kind of throw off on those things it's always giving you a prophecy but I'm gonna tell you Marilyn Manson would be a prophet compared to some of these people that claim their prophecy he really would be he would be a, a holy prophet compared to these people because he predicted the future on a lot of them songs I mean, you can get them out and listen to them you can get them albums out and listen to them and think and look at the the way the world is today, and one could say he was trying to make them that way. I don't think that. When you listen to the lyrics, it kind of sounds like it's kind of complaining about it, like it's kind of criticizing it. And I think he had the the, and he kind of blamed God and, and religion for that. But I'm not sure God and religion was to blame for it. It might have been, because I don't know, because that religious stuff, it does push people away. It pushes people away from God. But I think he was blaming from a different perspective than how I would see it. Like, I kind of see it that they took God away, and I think he was, he was seeing it from a perspective like they were forcing God on people. 
And that is true. You can't force God on nobody. Even he wasn't forcing us. He said, choose life, death, blessing, and cursing. You have to make that choice. And when you start enforcing that choice, but I think he was kind of blaming God in schools and stuff. And, but I blame them taking God out of it. You see what I'm saying? I don't know what he's thinking. I'm just giving you my opinion. I mean, he, he he says his music's whatever it is to you. That's always been his tale. Whatever it is to you. Only Marilyn Manson knows what he was thinking. He might not even think of anything. He might have been strung out so bad that he couldn't remember when he was just writing them down as they was coming to him. Because he did have his problems. I hope he's got past all that. He seems like he has. I don't know him personally. So. I think he's gotten past it. And I hope he's gotten past it. You know, a lot of rockers turned up dead off that junk. It's killed a lot of them. I didn't do nothing tonight. I was planning to find some missions. But I'm going to have to go because I don't want to stay up too late. I want to try to get some sleep and I can't see the time. Oh, it's only 3.29. I said I would stay somewhere around. Maybe I can find something to do before I get off here. Get off this conversation that I got my stuff that's stuck in. Just bringing up Trent and the satellite song. Say your name. I love the lyrics to that song, though. Because now they really, they, they were already watching us back then, though. Did y'all know that they had, even in the, the late 80s, early 90s, they had a satellite that could read a quarter in your hand or a dime in your hand or a quarter or something like that so they've had their satellites for a while I think it was around the time they were starting in the first Gulf War that was my first hearing about it. About the satellite that could read something in your hand. Because they was watching Iraq with those things. But you know what? It also goes to show what good liars they are. Because you know they kept telling us that they had weapons of mass destruction. They knew they didn't have those weapons. They were freaking watching them. And there's no telling what they're lying to us about right now. And I'm going to shut up. So there's already enough propaganda out there. And I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. I'm not trying to add to the propaganda. Even when I'm doing my podcast, I'm really trying to figure out what's going on. I'm not trying to add to any propaganda. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Because you can't trust the word they say. But I know one thing. And I'll shut up. I'll just keep that on my podcast. Because I'm treading dangerous waters. I'll just shut up. I'll leave it on the podcast. If they were to take that podcast off of what it's on now, I'll just put it on a network where I can put it. But they can't stop me from recording it. They can attempt. They have attempted. Many a times. Since I got backup recorders. And if they start doing it like they do, I'll just keep taping it until I get it. Even if I have to tape it piece by piece. Believe me, whole podcasts have erased. 
And guess what? When they erase, guess what name I've usually mentioned? But she's a woman. And she was married to number 42, and she's even ran for president herself. Any time I've ever been talking about them Clintons, I have podcasts as a race. They, they literally go away. Sometimes I've even got out the old-fashioned tape recorder as backup. That's not crazy. That really has happened many a time. Many a time. Since 2017, since I've been doing that podcast. But now it's getting to the point where I have to just throw them away. But I get so frustrated. I'm afraid I'm going to say something that will get me in trouble. And these animals, these devils, they're not worth going to jail over. They're worth standing up to, but they're not worth going to jail over. You see, there's a right way to stand up to them, and there's a wrong way. She lost her orange car. It's gone. I'm just going to let it go. It's about to blow up anyway. It's smoking. So she finally lost the orange car. I wonder if I start a remission and refine another session. I wonder if I can keep it. We'll see. It may be gone. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try and see if she's still got her orange car. She may lose it. If she does, it'll be one of the cars I've lost. I've done lost several cars since starting this thing. I actually lost the first one with Jill. I may have to give in. My eyes are kind of strained. I'm not wanting to. I'm telling you, I didn't get to play games for a whole month. 20 minutes here. 10 minutes there. 3 or 4 weeks. I could barely set up to play. And now I'm wanting to... I kind of want to be, if you want to be honest, I want to kind of be like I was in the 90s. I mean, the early 2000s, because I got it that late. Last week in 99. So it was the 2000s. Now we go go to the garage and see if she's lost that orange car. If I can get her to the garage. I can't even find the freaking door. Oh, yeah, they are. Now, I gotta remember I need to turn and take a turn. I finally got it down. I, I used to, oh god, I went outside. Dang it. I went outside. Yeah, after I see whether her car is still there or not, I'm going to, I guess I'm going to call it quits and just call this a wasted night. One of those nights where I just ride around in a circle. I've almost completely got my throat back, which is wonderful. But you know, I would have lost it anyway. Because I always lose it during her allergy season. So either way, it was destined for my throat to get sore. Yes, she still got it, and it's not even tore up. Thank you, Jesus. Although she stole that car. And I have a saying about that. God don't bless crying. If you know God, he's the one who wrote the first criminal codes. You know, they go on about their laws and their criminal codes. He's the one who first wrote a criminal code.
Well, I'm sure some of them. I'm sure some of them uh, societies that were. I'm sure they had their rules and regulations. Even before he gave the Israelites the law. But you know, God's always been. So he already had his law in mind and his word in mind even before he ever, before it was ever written. He spoke everything into being. Well, I guess I'll just put her to bed. I'll go out with her going to bed. And then we'll pick up tomorrow. I probably won't do the morning session because if I take any missions and breakfast gets ready, I just have to either pause it or cut it off. If you're in the middle of a mission and other people's invited, you can't fall. And it ain't really good to cut off. That's bad. So I probably, and if I do take a morning session, I'll just ride around and find some light stuff to do. I won't take anything big. I'm not really happy with most of her clothes. But you know what? That WWE game's ugly clothes too, so. God, some of them outfits are so ugly. I don't even know who to wear that shit. I don't want to say, they need new designers in these games. Of course, I know the fashion designers ain't that good either. Go look at some of the stuff that's on the Super I mean, the shelves. Ugly. Hillary Clinton. You know, she was so ugly. I used to think that's mean for throwing off on her. You know, they really did No wonder she went so bitter. I mean, do y'all ever remember how they used to do Chelsea? And how they even did her? No wonder she... And then she had to deal with Bill Clinton. I kind of sympathize with her. Even though I don't like her and I don't want her as my president, I kind of sympathize with her. She put up with a lot of crap, y'all. Maybe she just got mean. Maybe she just got mean and she got even and got back at him. Do y'all not remember how they used to crit And they were real ugly to Chelsea. I mean, I used to just get fighting mad and I was a 20-something year old back then. And I think, she's a little girl. Leave her out of it. They'd criticize Hillary on everything she wore, and they were they they didn't look that good. I don't understand why she made herself look that way. I mean, when she was young, she was kind of sort of pretty looking. Uh, I do kind of sympathize with her because I think she just might have got mean and might have got even, and I could see that point because you I'm just like that. You push me around, I want to get even with you. Part of me is like Hillary. If she did what I think she did. I mean, that's ugly to her. Ugly to her. At least I do when I do talk about her. I'm talking about what she's done to our country. And all them people that have been lining themselves with the New World Order, if you look at them, they all have the same trait. It's all like they've, well, you know the spider people in the, in the books, or, or H.G. Wells' book? They kind of become looking like how they, the, the spirit that they in, emitted. So you can't just throw off Hillary on that, because all of them have 
sort of like I was looking at uh, what's his name tonight Schumer he he jumped up and started clapping before it was time for him to clap he looked more demonic than he's ever looked anyways like I was saying I can sort of sympathize with Hillary because they kind of pushed her around. She had to deal with that husband that she had to deal with. And they were mean to her daughter. Mean. So I'm going to get out of here. I'll see you all later. Now see, I always try to seize it. I always try to see the whole thing picture and not just one side of it. But you got to be careful with that. Because you know there's people that sympathize with criminals and liberals. Liberals have a bad habit of sympathizing with people like serial killers. You have to be careful with that. You know what? You can't let it affect you to the point that you're just willing to overlook it, but I can see the side. Like, I can even see the side that push. Like, if you look at some of them serial killers with their psychology, some of the things that happen to them as children, I can see it, but I'm still going to say, yet we have to deal with that person. We can't turn that person loose on the street. You see what I'm saying? Even though I can see... What happened? I'm not willing to just excuse it. But I do try to see the sides and everything. But there's always two sides to every story, especially when there's people involved. And everybody's one-sided. You know, they just went Ukraine good, Putin and Russia evil. This stuff's been going on for years. The current started in 14 but the, the whole thing dates back 30 years it dates back to when the Soviet Union fell and I'm not even sympathizing with Putin but it's bigger than how people spin it and I'm gonna get out of here and those people they're talking about going to war They've been invited. Won't they go over there and fight? 